Hey guys, this is Art, and in today's video, we're going to be going over how to draw distressed metal. Using the ragged hard round brush here in the beginning, I'm just applying very light brush strokes. When drawing distressed metal, it's a process. There's going to be multiple layers that are all going to be applied onto the drawing to get that full battle damage distressed effect. So here at the very beginning, I'm using a white brush and just very lightly drawing in various scratch marks. But emphasizing the white right here at the edges because when metal is damaged or distressed, typically it occurs at the edges. So that's the very first part where paint will get stripped, paint will get removed, etc. So when doing distressed, you kind of want to be random at it, not just all in one direction because when Iron Man or any person's in a fight, they'll receive damage from different directions. And now onto drawing major battle damage. You start with a very dark color. Here I'm using black, but I will go in between black and dark red. In the very beginning, you're just drawing the overall silhouette or the outline and remembering the direction of the metal. You notice at the very top right here kind of curves in so I'm adjusting the way this giant scratch mark is appearing because it curves you want to remember the direction of the surface that you're drawing on not everything has straight marks to help establish the sense of 3d or depth in an object is to remember the shape that it is so as I continue to add the more heavy battle damage effect onto Iron Man. Like I said in the beginning is you want to be random about it. The great thing about drawing something that's battle damage, it's entirely up to you how severe or how minimal the damage is and where it's at. So with that, I'm just adding in these dark marks to different various spots on his armor. Don't worry that it doesn't quite look right yet because like I said, doing something that's damaged, it's a process, it takes layers. It's a simple lighting effect that'll make it look like we've actually damaged this metal. Even though right now, it does not look like it. And the real quick way to make it appear as if the metal has been damaged is to simply add a highlight to the edges. And instantly, those black marks now appear as if they really did penetrate that metal. And like I said, the great thing about making something that's battle damaged, you can erase it and add on to it, modify it as you deem fit. So here I'm going back and forth between black and white, adding a few marks here and there, but now emphasizing the white highlights. But keep in mind, this could be different colors because it's an opaque white, it appears a very light gray because that's basically what the metal is underneath. So now I'm going back to all the marks that I've drawn in the dark color and just adding highlights to the edges. Kind of just adding a little bit of brush strokes here and there to emphasize that the paint has been removed from that area. And by simply just adding these little highlights to the edges, you notice how instantly it creates that sense of depth. It tricks your mind into registering it as a 3D object. Because once you add in highlights and shadows, that is the key. It creates that sense of depth to anyone's eye. That's how a circle becomes a sphere or how any object becomes 3D. You will continue to notice the change in the armor as I continue to add those highlights. And now onto the center section of damage. After drawing the outline of it, using a light gray, here I'm just experimenting with various texture brushes that will have links down below. This is Paint Texture 1. Just drawing in to try to add some texture to this area from whites to grays as seen here. Getting another texture brush from that same pack. Then I go back to the ragged hard round brush. Now after adding these shadows, you begin to see how now it appears that this metal, this armor has layers. How now you're looking underneath it because that's the illusion that is created once you add those shadows while highlighting the edges or the rim of the layer above it. 
in a way you can kind of say it creates an optical illusion, which tricks your eye, as I said before. As I continue to add in the dark marks, the dark scratches, because it can't be smooth completely because this is a battle damaged area. And now we're gonna create a new layer and use the dirt brush. This brush helps significantly in making something look battle damaged. Once selected, you're gonna hit F5 or go to the menu above and hit Window, Brush Settings. And once that pops up, you're gonna to wanna to go to Shape Dynamics, click that. And then under Angle Jitter, currently it's at 0%, you're gonna to wanna to change that to 100. And the reason for this change is so now when you paint, it does not appear as if the same brush is stamped repeatedly in the same direction. And now it appears random, and by doing that, it now appears more natural. And now you just begin to paint in where you want the damage to appear more severe. And in this layer, you could change the blending mode to however you deem fit. Usually it's multiply or hard light. For this particular drawing, I went with hard light because I didn't want it to be too strong. Like I said before, you can make it appear as intense or minimal as you want when you're doing the battle damage effect to your drawings. I'm using dark reds and browns as the colors of choice to make it appear as if it's battle damaged because the way it appears once you apply that blending mode to the colors underneath it, it gives it that dark worn look. Simply going back and forth to seeing how severe you want it to look. Multiply will make it appear more stronger, hard light, more minimal but still visible. And for the most part, it's just wash, rinse, and repeat. This exact same process over and over until you get a desired effect. And here I'm just going back and making the edges appear more worn and damaged because I felt it just needed a little bit more. And the key is to always remember to add in a little bit of highlights around the edges. Once again, I added another layer with a dirt brush to add in some more various colors onto his armor. The one thing to remember when doing something that appears battle damaged is to experiment, to add in some more various colors onto it so that it gives it that more worn effect. And like I said, you can always take it a little bit back or continue to add even more to get that effect that you want. And here is a quick comparison of where we started off in this video and where we ended up, the before and the after. And you can see significant battle damage has been painted onto his armor. And using the same tips that I gave you, this is how I completed the Iron Man in this drawing. And that's it. I hope you learned something new in this video. If you liked it, why don't you give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, why don't you consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell so you never miss any new video that I do. And until the next one guys, goodbye.